I am so pleased to welcome you to The Bill King Show. Eva Thomas, uh, you are the director, writer, and producer of the upcoming world premiere uh, TIFF short film, Red Lights. What does it feel to have Red Lights selected as part of the Shortcuts program at this year's festival? And is this your first time presenting? Yes, yes, it is. It's um, It feels um, absolutely incredible and humbling to be invited to premiere at TIFF. Um, it's sort of a remarkable platform. And as a, a filmmaker making films in Canada, um, it's definitely the goal. <laughs> um, when I was making the film, I used to, you know, I was joking on set, when we premiere at TIFF and I kind of in some ways feel like I willed it in, into being um, by the sheer force of my will. Um, it's also very humbling uh, as a filmmaker. I know they get a lot of uh, projects. So to think that my project um, had a, a value and had a cinematic uh, uh, value as well to to be presented at a film festival like TIFF is, is it's, it's pretty remarkable. Red Light stars two amazing actresses, uh, Kenetio Horn and Ellen Jade. And this is a story about two friends whose night out at a local bar turns dangerous. You address Starlight Tours, and it's the brutal abduction of Indigenous people by law enforcement, and then their cruel abandonment into remote um, areas and, and freezing sub-zero weather. What does it mean for you to be able to tell this story and in many, many ways, educate um, your audience. And this is a world premiere, so the world at large about issues facing indigenous communities. Yeah, certainly there is certainly an educational component of the film, which when I think when I started out, I wasn't sure that's what I was doing. Um, I was really just trying to tell us a cinematic story about indigenous people. And I sort of took for granted that, that everyone knew what a starlight door was. And I've learned the process that they don't. Um, I would say about half of my crew was had no idea. And um, when I would talk to people about it, they would, they would believe that this was a thing. And so in some ways it was a little bit um, shocking to me that it's not more well known. But I guess in the indigenous community, we we fully know what these things are. And I guess just much like the residential school, we knew as it, it was in our consciousness much, much um, before it was in the consciousness of sort of most Canadians. And so, yeah, there's certainly an educational component to it. And to be able to tell an indigenous story to feature two incredible indigenous actress, actresses and as well, Jennifer Podemski, who came in to do the voice of the mother in, in the film, um, yeah, it's it, and, and then to be supported by the Indigenous Screen Office and, and Canada Council for the Arts and the Ontario Arts Council to tell this story, which I mean, to be to be honest with you, there are times where I'm like you have to be brave, Eva. You can't be you can't be afraid to tell the story because there were moments where I was I was afraid to tell the story. And um, and then that's when someone would read it and they'd be like, oh, it's so good. And then I'd get my confidence back. And um, it's um, I'm, re I'm really proud of it. When you're writing these types of stories that are deeply personal and profound, I'm curious what the self-care regimen is between yourself and the crew. Like, how are you able to tend to each other um, during the filming? Yeah, I I like to think of myself as a collaborative um, uh, creative. And as a director, I, I get to work with a lot of really amazing and creative people who have skill sets that allow me to make a film that I certainly could not have done on my own. So I think it was um, really sort of communicating to the crew and certainly the cast that this was an important story and that everyone was contributing in a meaningful way. And I even told um, my crew, I was like, we need to make sure we're taking care of the actresses because this is something that is traumatic for us. And I think that's why the performances are so riveting is because it's so personal and that fear of the cops is so real in our community that uh, I was always checking in like, someone go check on my actresses. How are my actresses doing? And um, yeah, that was sort of the, in, you know, the environment is, we need to take care of each other on set um, on every project, I think. Uh, and certainly this one as well. And for myself, I, uh, I surrounded myself with a, with a really good team. I think my producers got it right away, what I was trying to do. And 
they brought their skill set and, and their contacts in the industry to surround me with a really talented crew. And the fact that I got um, support from the actresses and, and, and then Jennifer Gnemski came on, um, I think helped to build my confidence in the story that I was telling and the, and the film that I was making was important. Yes. And how long from start to finish uh, was Red Lights was this project? I was just looking back at my notes. I started um, dreaming up the the script in 2019 and worked on it um, through kind of did some concept in 2019 to 2020. And then I started um, uh, raising some of the funds. And uh, then I started, I, I brought on my producer, Alan Bacchus, who was also my story editor in the process. And then we brought on some of the good folks at Carousel Pictures, um, Caitlin uh, Carousel and Tyler Levine. And then, and then we started building the team. We did a three-day shoot in the GTA and um, which was kind of hard to find something that's a little bit remote. Uh, uh, so we shot at, uh, two nights at a bar in Mississauga and then a night at the Clairville Conservatory in um, Brampton. Brampton, I think it is, north of the, um, the Toronto Airport. You started your career off not in the director's chair, but as a story editor and producer. What was that, that moment that inspired you to take on the director's seat? Sure. It actually started um, as an actress. I, I trained as an actress um, in, uh, in, in New York City and then went on to London, England to do some training there and then went off to L.A. because I wanted to be an actress. And then my first agent asked me if I knew how to ride a horse, because if I wanted to work as a native actress in Hollywood, I would have to know how to ride a horse. And I was <laughs> truly <laughs> shocked and offended by this statement. But at the same time, he wasn't wrong because the years I spent in Hollywood were what we called the leather and the feather gigs. And I was like, hmm, I better start writing. And that's sort of what kind of um, drew me to the, on- the concept of creating work. And then when I came back to Canada, one of the very first experiences I had was I, um, I did the Indigenous Story Editing Mentorship at the Harold Greenberg Fund, which was the partnership between Imaginative and the Harold Greenberg Fund, which is where I met my producer, Alan Backus, who became a great mentor to me and really learned how do you craft a, how do you craft a script? What are the important um, elements of that script? How does the script develop over time? And um, after that experience, started working with a lot of writers on their script. So um but the the spark for why did I want to direct was when I had the good opportunity to be associate producer on Night Raiders. And I got to watch Dennis Goulet direct. And I thought to myself, oh, yeah, I want to do that. So she was a great inspiration to me. Oh, great, great. And speaking of Imagine Native, you had um, an opportunity to mentor as well, right? Yeah. Writers, yeah. Absolutely. For the, la- um, for the last five years, and this is the fifth year of the Imaginative Features Lab, I have been um, the story editor and mentor and facilitator of that program. So every year we take four writers, to, four Indigenous writers, two Canadian writers and two international writers. And I take them through a nine or 10 month process from like, I have an idea for a feature film script to treatment first draft, second draft, and a third draft. Um, but when they leave our program, I like to think that they have a polished first draft and one of the first um, uh, in the first year of our program, we uh, ushered Rosie through the development process, which of course went on to premiere at TIFF last year. And another one of the projects is going into production next month that we ushered. And so, um, yeah, it's it's I always say it's the indigenous in me trying to have to give back to the next generation, and that's one of the way that I one one of the ways that I do that. Speaking of that, you're a member of Walpole. Island First Nation, which is located in southwestern Ontario. Yes. Uh, you're also Thana Otham. Yes. Uh, Cherokee and Scottish. Yes, so, I'm a mixy. I'm yeah, a nice Scottish. mix. Yeah. So with that, with your cultural mix, is it important for you to have indigenous centric projects? Is is that where your heart lies? Yes, certainly at my heart is the representation of Indigenous people in a contemporary context. Mm -hmm. And I think that comes from that comment about having to be on a horse if I wanted to be a Native actress. I think growing up in a world where you don't see yourself has impacts on your identity and self-esteem. And so that's certainly, certainly important to me. Um, But beyond that, I can broaden that to say that, you know, BIPOC stories are also really important to me because I can see their solidarity between 
our communities and that sort of fight for representation because just as when you don't see yourself on um, camera as a, 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 a black uh, child or a native child or an Asian child or a Latino child that has impacts. And so um, I'm, I'm really passionate about those stories. But I, I just want to work and I just want to tell good stories. And that those stories come in a lot of forms. I have read that there's plans for red lights to expand into a larger theme feature. Could you give us a teaser or... I don't yeah, want to... I, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, that, that's sort of the whole <laughs> the whole reason I made the short is because I do have longer dreams of um, the the feature film version of it, which is um, much like an Indigenous Thelma and Louise or an Indigenous Queen and Slim. It's two Indigenous women who get in trouble with the law and then have to go on the run, and that's the feature version. And I guess the short film version is the trouble, <laughs> the trouble that they get into, and. Uh, yeah, I'm working on it now. I have a, a first sort of almost second draft of the script, and then I'll be looking to apply for production funds to make to make the thing. Luckily, um, my two lead actresses are interested in the feature um, version of the story, so that helps a lot because they are a little their careers are literally on fire right now, um, and uh, um, yeah, and so the the short premiering at TIFF is such a big deal, Red Lights to premiere at TIFF, because it brings awareness to me as a filmmaker. It brings awareness to my story, me as a storyteller and and uh, sort of like, wow, look what she did with this short film. I wonder how, how what she would do with the feature. And, and that helps tremendously. And Red Lights world premiere as part of the TIFF Shortcuts program is Friday, September 8th. And then there's a second public screening on Tuesday, the 12th, and they're both at Scotiabank Theater. I do believe Cinema 14. To purchase tickets, visit tiff.net, T-I-F-F dot net. Is there another way that we can find out more about your projects and uh, red lights? Well, I can't say much now, but <laughs> um, if you miss it at TIFF, there were um, Red Lights is going to have uh, uh, some upcoming um, screens at other film festivals. Um, so if you miss it at TIFF, you could you could check it out there. You can also follow me on Instagram, um, where I will be posting updates on the film and 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 the and the journey to the feature at Miss Eva Thomas on Instagram. Wonderful, wonderful. I would like to thank you so much, Eva, for uh, joining us today on the Bill King Show. Thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, the time and the platform to, to speak about my work and to speak about my s- stories and, and, and my, uh, my career, my emerging career as a director. Thank you so much. <laughs>